Hey guys, um, I literally, it's right now, it's literally 4am, and I had this dream that I really wanted to share, um, I know I look like a mess, um, I am still, like, very groggy, but I had to make this video because tomorrow, um, my family and I are going on a trip, um, and so I don't, I won't have time to film, um, I don't want to wake up anybody, uh, but I felt like this was so important to share, um, especially when I was right on my mind, and this video, um, might really upset people, um, uh, but, and I have my, um, retainers in, so sorry if I'm lispy, but this video might be, uh, very upsetting to some people because I'm going to speak very um, truthfully and you know very forward um, but the reason why I'm doing that is because I, I have a love for people to as you can see my channel is really about um, having this knowledge, having this wisdom and understanding of all these complex things, um, which leads you to Christ. That's the point. Um, it's all about God and God shows the proof of himself everywhere. And, and so I see, you know, the value in sharing everything I know about God and about Jesus Christ, um, so that people, more people can just either be equipped, you know, Christians, a lot of Christians watch this channel mostly, I would say, that they can be equipped, but there's also a lot of people that follow us, you know, follow this group um, that I'm part of, and also this channel, um, that are very much under the law, okay, and I know this is something that's been said a lot, you know, in the Christian community, people always talk about these things, um, but I... If you guys can see, like, on my channel, I don't really talk about that, that type of thing. I just talk about, um, mostly actually people who don't know Christ or, you know, equipping you guys to be able to talk to them or, like, atheists and such, and, or, you know, rapture stuff, right? And so this is video, you know, is, is uncomfortable for me, but I, I believe it's very important. That's my motivation to do it. So I had a dream last night, um... Uh, it was my son, okay, my son's name, um, I'm not gonna say his name, actually, but he's a, basically, he's na I named him after a prophet in the Bible, sorry guys, there's a lot of really, really, um, inappropriately crazy, like, most people are very wonderful, but there's a lot of very inappropriately crazy people online, so I don't want to say, you know, private information, but he was, he's a prophet in the Bible, um, a very wonderful prophet, and, he was walking and he stepped near a fire ant hill. It's, this dream is very vivid, okay? Like, it's one of those dreams where I know that they're from God, okay? And so all of a sudden the ants started climbing on his leg and I could see that they were, you know, it's, it's almost like they're not just climbing arbitrarily, but they're kind of climbing in like veins, like, not literal veins, but, you know, kind of like a tree branches, like they're very, you could tell there's something about it is very interconnected, and they're, like, climbing on his leg, and they're biting him, okay, so if you guys are familiar with fire ants, I'm not actually very familiar with them, um, well, before I wasn't, um, and before the stream, uh, but I didn't know that they really bite, I didn't, like, I used to live in Canada, so Canada, there's not really, as far as I know, I have never seen fire ants there, but anyway, and so I woke up, so, sorry, so when I saw this happen, um, I, sorry guys, I just woke up, so, when I saw this happen, I immediately knew this is a proof, like, God was speaking to me in the Holy Spirit, okay, I could feel him speak in me, and he said, um, that this is a proof that we are hearing from God, okay, and I woke up and I was, like, very confused, and so I know people like to say, well, dreams don't matter, well, actually this dream is it matters but it's not the point of this video okay so just hold tight um so i woke up and i was like what why is it that 
I don't understand what's going on and so I was like trying to understand so I, was, I researched a little bit about fire ants and basically they're very known for um, working together in tandem okay in groups and they basically release these pheromones that cause uh, the ants to like become very riled up they start to get into a frenzy and start communicating with each other um, to follow these pheromones and like it's usually because of you know somebody's near the hill so they're like trying to uber 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 defend 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 right even though most of the time when it comes to like I mean my in my dream my son he didn't even like step on the hill he stepped next to it okay and he was just standing there and he wasn't even doing anything he wasn't even aware of it and they're like defend 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 so they all like crawl on him and so they follow these pheromones that they release and they um work together and as they work together and as they release pheromones they actually end up releasing more pheromones and it kind of kind of causes this like snowball effect into like a very frenzied state and that's why they start biting okay and and uh if you can let them keep biting you they'll actually bite you harder and so um i was like it's very interesting and you know, especially because my son is named after, you know, a prophet. I'm not saying my son is a prophet, my goodness, <laughs> but he is named after a prophet. And so he, he's like, you know, I've, I've consecrated my son to Jesus Christ. You know, I said like, Lord, this is my firstborn and, you know, do with him what you, is pleasing to you. And, um, I actually used to have a lot of, um, anxiety with him. I used to have a lot of, uh, panic attacks with my son because I was, you know, worried about being a good mother to him. Um, and after doing this, you know, consecrating him to Jesus, um, I actually had no more panic attacks, like, at all. I felt so much peace about him. So it's been, you know, I know that the Lord was very pleased with that. But anyway, so, um, you know, my son, he, he loves Jesus. I haven't even, like, I just talked to him about Jesus naturally, but he loves Jesus so much. And he... Um, and so he rec really represents to me like this innocence and you know one who loves jesus and this you know this prophet you know my, god has shown me so many things through my son it's you know very beautiful and humbling um and so these and he was just sitting in there minding his own business and these ants are like attacking him and they're like defend 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 and in a frenzy and they're just you can tell they're working together you know this pheromones are like making them like stir crazy in a way and so I was, you know these these fire ant pheromones, like, I'm looking it up because I'm, you know, God gave me this interest in molecular biology, you know, I wasn't interested in this before, okay, he, like, turned that switch on a year ago, and he, you know, it, it's, it's very interesting, these, v, um, these pheromones are made up of VOCs, okay, they're, they're, they're carbon chains, they're made up of, like, a, a molecule that's linked, okay, very long, and they're made up of carbon atoms, okay? So carbon atoms are 666, right? And so there's a bunch of them. And what happens is they bond with hydrogen, okay? And hydrogen, like I said, is 111. And it actually represents Yahweh in a way, okay? A partially, kind of partial picture of Yahweh. I've talked about this in previous videos, so I'm not making this up right now. And so what happens when the carbon links with the, the hydrogen? It actually causes it to become like quite a neutral molecule and so that means it doesn't really have much charge unlike water i talked about how water is this beautiful picture of god well it's like when 666 carbon like man right and hydrogen come together it's like but it's like very um carbon rich so too much 666 carbon okay it actually causes it to really neutralize and so like i was saying this is this is a picture of what i'm about to talk about and it's really a picture, this video is actually about the pharisaical, okay, the Pharisee mindset, okay? What does it mean to be a Pharisee? And so this, it's called a hydrocarbon, okay? It's one type of VOC, okay? Which is the, like, this pheromone that um, fire ants release when they get you know, upset, okay? Um, this is a very, this is a molecule that represents the Pharisee. Okay, it's too much carbon and not enough of anything else, of, of these good things. So what happens is a VOC, which is again, 
a pheromone that the fire ant releases. A VOC is called a volatile organic compound. And what happens is when it's released, it's in the ant, okay, and it's not, there's no, it has a lack of oxygen. And so it's okay. It's not being volatile, okay, like, you know. And so when the ant releases it and sprays this, um, sprays this pheromone which starts attracting more ants and then it gets them worked up to where they start biting, okay? The the VOC is released and it reacts with oxygen. Okay, this is why this is why VOCs are very volatile. They're volatile because they react with oxygen. Okay? Oxygen is an atom that is eight eight eight. Okay, you can look this up on your own. Eight 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 is God. Eight 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 is Yahweh. It's Yahweh in it's Jesus Christ, you know, people talk about that more commonly, it's Jesus Christ, but they're interchangeable, okay, it's just God, okay, and you can think about it like this is the breath of life that's brought into man, this oxygen that's breathed in, okay, and what does man breathe out as the waste? He breathes out carbon dioxide, okay, it's, it's, there's a lot of carbon in it that you breathe out, okay, that's the 666, you're breathing in the 888, and you're breathing out the 666, okay, so this is why I'm saying biology, represents the gospel all right and so and so what happens is this these compounds this this carbon link compound you know interacts with oxygen as it's sprayed out of the ant and it's like very volatile and it releases a lot of you know chemicals that allow the ant to smell and it's like kind of hulk vibe okay and often pheromones can be you know very pleasing like flowers they release these beautiful you know they're called ketones okay these ketones are part of vocs okay vocs and um, pheromones okay and they tend to smell very good okay but the fire ants um vocs they smell if you smelled it on a very large level they would smell very bad and very bitter okay and so and so i just want to have that there first okay and and say this there's something about i've said this before um on our lives together as as 12 there is something that christians some christians get and many christians just don't understand okay and I'm not saying this to elate myself. I'm, I'm simply saying this because I know it very deeply and I want to share this so bad. And I'll tell you guys why I want to share it so bad at the end of the video, okay? Like, so bad. There are many Christians who use a, a very fleshy, wordy way to sound good, okay? I... I have seen so many people speak Christianese and, and just if you look at what they're saying at a deeper level and try to perceive what they're actually communicating, it can be very vile and it can sound so lovely because they use all the keywords. And this is an example of Satan masquerading as an angel of light. And, and I know that's thrown around a lot, but just hear me out. I see many of these law, law, law Christians, you know, they use these amazing sounding Christian holy words because they talk about the law of God, okay, and how good and grand it is. The law of God is so beautiful. I love it, okay? It brings light into this world. Therefore, you can be rest assured, okay, that I love the law of the Lord. I believe that the law is written on all of our hearts okay and so we're, we're transformed through the law okay but what people don't understand is the key but it's very small but very very important integral difference between loving the law in the flesh and loving the law in the spirit and so if you're talking about the law and you're screaming over the law to everybody it and you should repent and do all this very beautiful concepts okay very wonderful words okay but the key difference is the loving the law in the flesh okay the law is light okay it's the light of the world like i said okay 
You can even read Psalms 119, 105. Okay, it talks about, if you, if you look into the Hebrew, right, it talks about how the law, or sorry, the word of God is like the law. It's the speaking of the Lord, which is the commandment, which I've talked about in my videos, is akin to saying the carving into stone. Okay, which is the holiness of God. Like God's holy when he carves into stone. That's why he wants uncut stone for the, for the sacrifices of man. Okay, because when man carves into stone, aka when man speaks, aka when man commands or writes law or whatever, it ends up in disaster and corruption. That's manifestation right there for you. When man manifests, you know, it's corrupt. So the law is light. Okay, Psalms, it says... Um, that the word of the Lord is likened to a lamp, okay, and a light, okay, so I think we can all be on the same page, you know, on that. If you look at light and the nature of light, if you take a light and you start covering it with layers of fabric, okay, throw in layers and layers, you got 20 layers on there, what's going to happen to light? You can't, it does not permeate, it does not permeate, okay, these sound like concepts that you, people know, but they don't, People, I see people just don't understand this, okay? It causes the light to not permeate. You know, and you can see this in um, Matthew Matthew 5, 1, 5, where it talks about um, taking your light and you, you don't cover it with a, bu a bushel, right? A basket. You, you let the light just be up in the air and just shine for the whole house, okay? So this really goes back to everything I've been talking about physics, okay? This is some... Physics is great because you're able to just see it right there, tangible evidence in front of you, okay? It's like very nice parable right there in your eyes, okay? So what allows light to permeate very, very easily? When there's no matter in the way. And so remember, matter really represents, you know, that everything that we... R really represents man, okay, because I've talked about this, matter has mass, if you have mass, you cannot travel at the speed of light, therefore, you're weighed down and very soupy and very, uh, you know, like chains and heavy, think about it like that, you're just chained down, God is like light, he's not, he not, he's not literally light, but he's like light, and light can just travel, it's free, and it essentially lives forever, from our perspective, right? And so it's a picture of who God is. And so, therefore, to have light permeate more, if light is covered, you know, by matter, and it starts to be dampened and, you know, covered, then the opposite would be the best. And the, and the extreme opposite of that is to have nothing, no matter. And that's called a vacuum, okay? That's why the sun can propagate its light very strongly. Um, there's, there's no matter, okay? That's the best, you know, case scenario. And so... And so this is the akin to saying like the spirit, okay? So this is why we say less of us and more of God because it's like saying a vacuum, okay? Less matter, more vacuum, okay? More nothingness. Therefore, God can shine his light and it it just manifests so beautifully, okay? Okay, so, so a great biblical example of this could be Hebrews 4.12 where, you know, it talks about how the light of, of God just goes deep it's the word okay the word spoken again the word spoken the law the writing in stone it's all the same thing it goes deep into the soul and even cuts okay it's not just reflected it goes in there and cuts and it's penetrating all the way in there okay into the spirit and so this is why the sky is blue okay because the sky you know allows the light to flow through it it's not blocking it because the light comes then down to us right and so the sky is blue, which really mirrors this, um, you know, lapis lazuli color, this, this color of, of God, right? Where, you know, they say that the stone tablets of Moses was lapis lazuli because God touched it and he carved into it and it transformed. Just like his throne, just like when his feet touched the mountain, okay? And so you have this blue picture you know, it, it really represents the sky, it represents the water, which both interact with light. The light is allowed to, you know, interact with these two things that cause this these phenomena, like rainbows, but also like this blue color that you keep seeing. And so it's 
over and over again in nature a picture of the light and the word of God, you know, touching the heart and transforming it to this blue, okay, to this lapis lazuli, you know, to this law, okay, the law of God written on the heart is that's really what it's saying. And so it's, it's, it's like stone, you know, stone, light can't permeate it. But when it says a heart of flesh, it's really representing the softened heart. And so it's like, a, it's kind of like the sky where it's becoming more soft and more open, allowing the light to flow through it. Okay, this is what it means to not be resistant. This is also what it means to be reprobate and be, you know, like, so that the light just bounces off, right? And so when, when yeah, when the light goes through, it, it um, it's like this... Yeah, it's like the transformation, it's like the law, you know, and it's like the light, or, sorry, it's like the sky becoming blue, okay? And so darkness is really like seeing like too much matter, too many, um, you know, layers of fabric or whatnot onto um, the light, okay? So that's a picture of darkness and lawlessness, right? And so it's very interesting that when you go into Matthew 24, where it talks about this lawlessness that's coming, okay, at, in the end times, which is happening now, it, it says, it talks about, and people's love will wax cold, okay? If you look into the language, just look at, into this on your own. In the Greek, okay, it talks about, when it, when it talks about the, the, the love waxing cold, it talks about, it's almost like, the wind, okay, and the, and the air and the oxygen, because it's not, I don't, I haven't seen in the Bible, like, oxygen, like, 888, right, the 888 atom, but it, it talks about it, like, the wind and the breath of God, okay, but, so, waxing cold, kind of, is, what it really means in the Greek is this picture of, like, the air and the wind, except then there's this, like, evilness, like, you know, like, you can think about it, like, a chemical kind of bitterness that, comes in and like stains it and just causes it to um change change state so it becomes cold is what it's saying but it also can imply like it's 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 um permeating into this wind and kind of corrupting it in a way and so this is literally what vocs do okay vocs again are very volatile organic compounds that when they react with oxygen okay they stain the oxygen and so if you don't if you're in a room with a lot of vocs and you don't have any circulation or fans or anything you're going to start getting very sick okay because they're very it's a very carbon very carbon based uh you know compound okay this carbon is not really good to be breathing in because it's 666 and so this is literally a picture, again, of the pharisaical mindset, okay, this very, like, obsession with law in the flesh, okay, when people are speaking about the law, it's wonderful, I love speaking about the law, I love hearing about the law, but the, the problem is, is if the law, if you're speaking law in flesh, okay, and, and you can say, it's not about, I'm in my flesh, okay, it's about, has the law permeated in your spirit or is it permeated in your flesh and the, the way to see this is how you talk about obedience if the law permeates in your flesh then it's all about all the actions that you have to do to follow through you know to obey the law you have to not wear makeup you have to wear the right clothing you have to um you know pray you have to pray properly, you have to, you know, if you find yourself sitting there, you're commenting, you're telling people, you know, hey, you shouldn't be wearing a graven image around your neck, you shouldn't be wearing a cross, you shouldn't be having your nails done, you, 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 you're coloring your hair, you're wearing makeup, you're doing all sorts of, you know, you're wearing this type of clothing, oh, that color is not right, it's, you shouldn't be wearing that. This is the law permeating, you know, not permeating, but this is the you know, going after the law, which is the light of God, in the flesh, okay? The law is great. There's nothing wrong with talking about the law. If you're doing it in your flesh, these are the type of things that you'll be saying, okay? If the law is penetrating into the spirit, you know, you're not, you're not saying these type of things because you understand that it's not about physically 
obeying the law. It's about the heart and the change of the heart, the transformation of the heart. Okay, the heart, again, like I said, when I say heart, I'm talking about mom in Korean, okay? Mom means mind and heart. It just means like the inner person, okay, the spirit, okay? It's the seed of everything you do. You know, you're not, you're not, you're not going to be, you know, sitting there worrying. Like, of course you want to obey God. There's nothing wrong with that, again. But you're obeying God in the spirit, okay, not in the flesh. You're allowing the law and the light of God to, to penetrate deep inside. You're not just going through these emotions, okay? And you might feel like, well, I love and I'm so loving and I understand. You know, this is a very ego. The ego is still the flesh, all right? And the ego... This is the ego in Greek means literally your understanding. Okay, so it says lean not on your understanding. Everyone has ego, even I have ego, right? Everyone has ego, but if you're doing the law through the ego, then you're literally dampening it. You're you're causing the light to be stopped, okay? And so then you start finding yourself commenting things like how to follow the law in in, in all these rules and ways, okay? Don't wear makeup, don't do this and that. So it's it's very important, you know, this is why God talks about the fruit, because this is the evidence of the unseen, which is inside. And so if you're sitting there, you're saying all sorts of holy words, and you're saying wonderful Christianese, it doesn't have any meaning. It doesn't, like, many these Christians need to be very aware of this concept so that when you see people, you know, and the fruit is not there, okay, and there, and, and you have to really dig into fruit, okay, it's not about the human fruit, it's about the fruit of God, and remember, God is a God of love, but he's also a God of justice, he does the hard stuff, okay, he does stuff that it's, in his hard for man to comprehend and accept sometimes, but in the end, it's for the good, all right, for the good of God and of Christ, okay, not the good of man, but uh, you know, people need to understand these concepts so they can, you know, see that and, and discern better, okay? Because so many times I've seen people say wonderful sounding stuff about law and this and love of God. Well, love of God is one big one, but also law and all these things. And it sounds wonderful. They use this Christianese, you know, and um, and then people you know, say, oh, you sound so wonderful, therefore you're right, and it's like, but you have, if you actually, like, look at the logic there, and what they're actually promoting, and if you understand their intention, like, what they're pr trying to communicate, you know, behind it, then you can see, like, it's not a very fruitful, you know, endeavor, right? And so the reason why, you know, in this dream, I was shown that this is, like, proof that we're hearing from God and why I'm bringing up these VOCs and what does this have to do with the rest of what I'm talking about well it's very interesting how these VOCs like just when they touch you know oxygen 888 they just get into a frenzy and so how does this relate to people and, and anyone watching this well if you see people becoming very very triggered okay they they're very triggered you know like i said they sorry guys my hair is like i haven't brushed it but they tend to um you know you know they're commenting and they're like the lord you know is telling me that you're very demonic because you are not wearing makeup and like things like that you know that's obviously like you know an easier way to see like that's you know not of god right and so um you know other things you know people commenting i've seen people they comment like 10 times on a video they're, they're commenting 10 times on a video they're saying you know all these reasons why we're satanic and we're um, demonic and we're not hearing from god um and you'll see you know you see this like very frenzy behavior you see this very triggered behavior triggering is when your mind is like kind of obsessing over something okay you could be actually speaking very respectfully and very in in your eyes like it seems very respectful it seems wonderful you're using those keywords those christianese words and you're talking about the law you're talking about all these wonderful concepts but if you're you know really going in there like over and over and over and you can't stop and you're every day and you're going to every video and five comments and 10 comments or you're you're replying to people you're seeking out 
you know, my channel, other people's channel, and just commenting and replying on every single comment. I have to make sure that my words are heard and I just, oh, I'm sounding wonderful. I'm speaking about the law. I'm speaking about God is love and God is amazing and all these wonderful things, okay? But it's very fleshy, okay? If you if you find yourself just doing this very repetitive behavior, you know, in psychology, that is an obsession. It is an obsession. Um, and it, it, it's really stemming from a very triggered mindset, okay? This is why I've said this before and I, I'll say it again. You know, being very triggered is very, it's very demonic, okay? And I'm not trying to lob that, like, accusations. I'm just, I'm really, it really is demonic. Um, when I wasn't a Christian and I struggled with a lot of mental health issues, I would get very triggered. I had PTSD and I still struggle a little bit, but very minutely in comparison to before. Um, and I would get very, very triggered by small things and I would just kind of like ruminate and ruminate and ruminate and I'm not doing anything like outwardly crazy, you know, so I'm calm, I'm concise, but I'm ruminating and going and going and triggered and triggered and commenting. And, you know, it's the same thing. It's just commenting and commenting and replying and rep as you can see, it's like, it's not, it's not of God. This is not a peace. This is not you know, the Holy Spirit working, this is very, you know, it's very demonic. And, you know, some people watching this, especially the, the very Pharisee, like, la, like, people, you know, might say, well, I am, you know, defending the truth and defending God, you know, I believe that defending the truth, truth is a wonderful thing, and, you know, more people need to do it, you know, this true truth of Jesus Christ, we need to do this. But they say, you know, you're a false prophet, you're hearing from demons, therefore I have to, like, drive that point home. Well, even if, okay, first of all, God doesn't need um, defending, okay, God, there's something called the Holy Spirit, and so that's why the gospel is supposed to be very simple, so that people get the Holy Spirit, and then they discern, okay, this channel is mostly for Christians, or people who have a lot of knowledge about the Bible, if the, even if they're not Christians, like, they're very fleshy law, you know, Pharisees, but still, it's for people who have understanding, okay, and, but even if you're, you know, talking about these, in your head, like, your intention, First of all, um, these, you know, great leaders in this war, like history, who did all these grand things for the greater good, like atheists, you know, the they're atheists use the greater good as their standard of morality, okay? Their intention was probably wonderful. I'm sure the Antichrist's intention will be for the greater good, but often, you know, there's ideologies that come from that, like, um, let's kill all the weak people so that the strong people can survive and we can take most of the food and blah, blah. Like, that's the type of mentality that they have, and that is, like, this good intention, okay? So intention is not everything. Intention matters, but it's not everything. And so your intention could be, you know, I'm defending the Lord, um, but, you know, the Spirit of the Lord would not have you being triggered, being in a frenzy, being very obsessive, you know, being having like an obsessive compulsive, you know, desire to like spread this like sing singular opinion, okay, or you could even say, oh, that's not opinion, okay, singular thing, whatever it is, okay, X, okay if you're commenting it over and so one example is um i'm actually going to use the old group of you know there's seven people who left our group there are particular people in that group that um they will go to every single comment on every single post they will reply to other people's comments you know who are just you know even asking questions um they'll reply you know all these things and they sound so wonderful and christianese but it's if you like the very key thing is that they're very obsessive you know all of us have found that they're quite obsessive they'll make multiple accounts to just say the same things they're like well you're 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 blocking us so therefore um you know you're in the wrong you know we're just trying to talk about the truth and it's like it, it's like first of all you're not being very nice and that's why we are blocked you're not trying to be inquisitive or asking and be constructive you're just being very you know very very negative and actually just straight up lying but okay just imagine you know it's like okay what what if that what they're saying is true okay well it, again it's this very obsessive obsessive comment like they have to you know do this very repetitive okay and so this is 
he can say, Jess, why are you talking about all of this? Because this is how to discern what is of God and what is not. Okay, you have the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit also teaches you things and you see these things in the Bible. You can also see these things in physics, okay? Because this is literal, physics is looking at the creation of God, okay? You can see these concepts that God has put in, in your face and he's like, it's kind of a picture of the drowning man. He's like, I'm waiting for the miracle of God to pull me out of this water. And it's like, he sends a boat, like, and you're like, nope. I'm, I know there's going to be some supernatural miracle. It's like, well, the boat is there for you to get into. That's like, it's possible that God sent the boat for you, you know? And so this is what it's like with physics and looking at nature. It's like, yes, it's not this miracle, like supernatural, but it's still a, it's still a miracle because na nature itself is a miracle and it's, it's from God. It's a product of God. But anyway, so you can see all this, like everywhere with VOCs, you can see this picture of when the VOC touches the oxygen, it just combusts, okay, it combusts, and it, it starts, like, emanating this, like, with fire ants, this fiery, um, sorry, this very bitter pheromone, and it calls the other ants to come in, and we're gonna, it's a unity, see, a unity is good, but it's a, it's a quite a demonic unity, because there's this triggering event that kind of causes this snowball effect, and, um, it, it causes them all to swarm and start biting and biting and they're not even thinking they're not even thinking about is my son um is he hurting anyone is he hurting the anthill he wasn't you know in the dream like he's just sitting there minding his own business and they're like biting and biting and biting attack attack you know we need to defend we need to defend and they're all coming together and they're just not there's no logic there it's just it's just a chemical combustion when it touches you know when this um this chemical it's, it's too much carbon, right? It's too much flesh and it's touching the oxygen and it's like, it's like rearing its head as soon as it touches the oxygen, like how humans like see, you know, touch fire and it's like, oh, it's hot, you know? And so, um, you know, this is, this is just so what I've just seen in, you know, in so many people and they just don't understand that the light needs to penetrate into the spirit, okay? You walk, you can walk in the flesh and you can walk in the spirit. And, and another thing too is, you know, last, last example, you know, I've seen, you know, especially in the people I've just talked about, but in, in general, I see people talk so much about humble, be humble, humble, you need to be humble, humility, humility, you need to be humble. Again, humility is a wonderful concept and it's very, very key in finding Christ, okay? But if you find yourself, like, very obsessively, you, and, and these people might not see that they're being obsessive, but it is very obsessive, okay? If you're continuously having to tell somebody, be humble, be humble, humble in Christ, humble in Christ, you need to be humble, humble, you need to have humility, humility, like, over the course of, like, you know, even months, if you're continuously talking about that one you you cannot have a trust in the lord to be working on the person's heart okay you you think that you need to tell this is very fleshy you need to verbally tell that person and drive it home that they need to be humble okay you cannot trust that the holy spirit is working behind the scenes one and two this is again this very triggered frenzy like you know obsessive behavior that is again very demonic and again it sounds so wonderful especially to the christian you know wow you know i i've seen a testimony of a guy who said he was you know unfortunately he had some childhood traumas that happened to him from a man that was at his church and he said the reason why this man was able to he actually did it to multiple kids okay the reason why this was able to happen is because he just seemed so lovely okay and people could not fathom that this man was so evil inside okay and this is this is the, the thing about the flesh and the spirit you to be able to discern this the ain't um satan who walks around as the disguise as an angel of light okay how do you understand if it's truly bad okay again one great example is just this very swarming you know frenzy like behavior this re repetitive behavior even if it seems so love like i'm you know, I'm not talking about people who are supportive, watching our videos, you know, seeing wonderful comments in every video. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about five comments in a video. I'm talking about you're seeking them out to say all these things, to see what they're saying next so I can 
make sure that they're doing the Lord's work and they're they're not doing the Lord's work, I must tell them. I must tell them they're false. You're false. You're disgusting. You're false. Like, you know, it's repetitive stuff, especially when they're coming on lives. They're saying so many things in their eyes. They, they see it as defending. And this is exactly like the fire ants again. They, they think they're defending. They think they're doing all these, you know, grand things, but they're actually quite invasive. They're a very invasive species. You know, they, they work on like chemical combustion. They, um, they, they cannot like logically understand what they're doing they're just very aggressive aggressive species okay and they hurt man they hurt they just bite you and it, it hurts a lot and it's and they don't care you know that sounds like a pharisee to me but anyway so the last thing i wanted to say is um i do see you know this very often theme with these people being about you know about law being about um you know, doing everything right, like I said, but also that humility that I'm talking about. And with me in particular, you know, I just want to be really frank, like, not one person on this channel, like, who watches this channel, like, they're wonderful people on here, wonderful people who are so kind and, and supportive and loving, but not one person knows my testimony, and not one person knows what I do behind the scenes. And you know, I have had so many accusations, especially from, you know, the last group, which I believe are, are a picture of this very pharisaical mindset. Not all of them, but some of them are very much so. Um, a small, like, a portion of them, okay? So it's not all of them. Um, they love to say humility, 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 humility. And it's so crazy to me because I know that's not my Lord because he sees me what I do like when no one's looking and I'm not going to talk too much about that but I I know this sounds like I'm oh Jess are you accusing are you arguing are you stirring I'm saying this in love because <laughs> this was my motivation for making this video I have been through so much crap in my life and I have dealt with very crappy people to me i'm not talking about this instance you know with this 12 situation. i'm not talking about i'm talking about in my past people who've done very crappy things to me and i have had to learn what it means to forgive and and it when you forgive somebody it it literally feels like you're taking your ego out of your head and you're crushing it into the ground and stepping on it and it is so hard to do that because every human has an ego, okay? Every human has this understanding of our identity and this desire to live and all these things that, you know, stem from the ego and the ego is actually very beautiful, okay? But when it becomes too much, just like these VOCs I'm talking about where it's too much carbon, it, you know, this is when it becomes bad. And and, and forgiveness is like the ultimate act and I'm sure other people who's watching this who have had like traumas happen and just horrible situations happen putting the ego down to forgive somebody is so hard because it, it, it almost feels like you're cutting your own arm off and and it really is like one of the ultimate forms of humility and, and that is what Christ did for us and that is my motivation for, you know, having this type of mindset to lay myself down for others. And I, I'm, I'm freaking not just faking this. I get, I'm getting up right now and I know I'm not going to get very much sleep tonight. And I love getting a lot of sleep because I'm a mom. I'm getting up to make this video. And I know I cannot communicate this through the camera very well. And in general, because I'm I'm not a YouTuber, guys. I'm just a mom. I'm getting up at 4 a.m. to make this long video so that pe people can understand this concept, these concepts, so that they can, hopefully one person can see why they're doing what they're doing and why it's wrong. Maybe, maybe I can convince one person. Because I have seen so many testimonies where people have just been living their life doing their thing that they saw as right and they just heard somebody like for example certain h uh terrorist groups okay i shouldn't have said that 
in the Middle East who have a lot of hate, okay? They cannot forgive and they just always looking at other people, you know, you did wrong. It's you. It's you're the one who's, you know, the problem. They never look at themselves and it just stews that hate and that's this obsession and this fire ant, you know, analogy, this frenzy. And and they I've seen so many testimonies of these people being raised in this ideology, you know, maybe the equivalent is you've gone through childhood traumas or you've been raised with a terrible upbringing or your parents are crappy or just all this stuff, okay, just horrible stuff happening to you, maybe your marriage is bad, I don't know, or horrible situations that have happened to you in your life that it's really hard to get over and it's just caused you, maybe it's caused you to be like this, maybe you haven't yet made that connection, but they just heard somebody speak the truth. And it was hard. It's hard. They had to lay down everything to even listen to what they're saying. Maybe I'm wrong. That's very hard. Okay? And just hearing the understanding and the knowledge of something different changed the course of their life and made them repent and change and turn. And I'm saying this. I'm saying this for that. Like I'm looking at that and I just want people to see something new and refreshing and just let go and give it all to Jesus and be healed and turn away from the hate and the obsession and the obsessive compulsive behavior and the repetitive coming at people and just getting in there and getting frenzied and getting worked up and getting you know all this stuff I get hate comments all the time I've heard everything Okay, I don't get triggered. If people say horrible stuff about me, I don't get triggered. Okay, it's not great. I don't like it and it hurts. I don't get triggered. Okay, if you're getting triggered, even if somebody is mean to you, if you're getting triggered because you perceive a wrong done to you, these things are demonic. It is very demonic. And, and that's why I want to make this video is like, I know it seems, I know people don't like the negative. I know people don't like the... You know aggressive I know people want to just hear about the rapture and all the lovely things and I want to say those things too I love encouraging you guys but I get up in the middle of the night to make this video so that maybe one person can understand what it means to be a Pharisee like what it means to be in the flesh truly okay not just how people throw it around stopping and stifling the light of God okay and the whole which is the whole stifling the Holy Spirit it's putting yourself first because you're putting the 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 matter and the you know stuff over God to cover him not allowing the light of God to permeate okay in that way and and living out the law in in the flesh okay and not in the spirit and again these things you know will manifest or the symptoms you can say of being like that inside so you know observing somebody like that is this very frenzy like you know aggressive repetitive you know obsessive behavior even if it's in very lovely words the behavior is demonic it's simply it's not of god god does not get triggered god is not obsessive okay he does not obsess about anyone all right he's just calm and concise he's very he's very gentle and he's very um, stable minded okay Jesus he's not obsessive he's not triggered okay he's very thoughtful in everything he does you know Jesus simply he does get upset clearly he's gotten upset in the Bible God gets upset God shows in the Bible he's gotten upset but they don't get triggered okay and so and if you're sitting there, if you're getting triggered and you're saying, well, it's Jess's fault, it's this person's fault, it's whatever's fault, it's still, it doesn't matter what your reasoning is. The fact that you're getting triggered is very demonic, okay? I don't get triggered when people are, are very, very crappy to me. I've seen Mandy. I'm going to talk about Mandy, okay, from Seek Heavenly Things. That woman has gotten very disgusting phone calls. Like, I've seen her, people say heinous things to her. I've never seen her be triggered. And she's not obsessive about it. She's hurt by it. She doesn't like it. She's not triggered by it, all right? These, you know, uh, like, and the obsessive going on about the law, going on about the humility, uh, the, uh, going on about obe obey God, 
those are beautiful things. They're Christianese words because you can tell that that person is exposing themselves for being likened to a VOC, okay? Too much carbon, too much 666. Again, there's hydrogen in, in there. So they're talking about God, you know, because hydrogen is 111. It represents God, right? That's what a VOC is. It, has hydro it can have hydrogen in, in there, especially with fire ants. Um, so they have that God Christianese in there, but they, the reason why they're en they end up being neutral, okay, again with the <laughs> biology, is because the hydrogen becomes paired with the um, carbon, and so it's just too much. It's too much carbon. It's too much 666 and matter and you know man and flesh, and so it neutralizes the good part of it, and uh, and then it reacts very strongly with that oxygen, which is you know when the truth and you know we we talk about the truth. I talk about the truth on this channel. I talk about Jesus, um, but sometimes time, sometimes the truth is hard to hear, and it's. Um, it's very can be very strong but it's it's needed to be said because in the end it's like with a child like when you correct the child the correcting is hard and you want to give the child cake all the time but you have to correct the child and they grow up to be so mature and so wonderful and so that's that's a picture of god's truth okay sometimes it's just hard and and so anyway so i just really wanted to touch on this um i know it's a bit abstract and hard to this might sound hard to understand, but hopefully, you know, you can pray if you really are in Christ. You know, you can pray. Is what just saying right now, is it legit? Is it really from you, Jesus? Please show me. And if you're, if you find yourself just getting angry and triggered at this video, and you're not praying and asking the Lord, um, I might, you know, I want to really ask you to consider, like, do you have the Holy Spirit? Are you really saved? Because I don't, I don't want anyone to go to hell. And I said this, and I'll say it again. I will lay down my ego in the dirt, put myself out there, because I don't like getting hate comments. But I put myself out there over and over, and I'll, leave, you know, forgive and lay my ego down for one person to not go to hell. Okay, I'm not gonna sit and be unforgiving and have that hate just stewing and stewing and stewing to prevent somebody to go to hell. I want people to go to heaven so bad, okay? And this is why I'm doing this video. I really hope you guys can, I cry over it, literally, okay? So, I hope you guys can understand this video and I love you guys and I gotta go back to sleep. I'm very exhausted, okay? Love you guys.